Because I've studied these empires, these dynasties, going back since the last 500 years. And you see the same thing happening over and over again. When there's a financial problem, when the granaries are empty and the coffers are empty, they print money. And when they print money and the coffers are empty, it devalues money. And with that, when you have a large gap of people at each other's throats, then you create a, a risk of an internal conflict. And that is what I think is we're at risk of. Ray Dalio, who is an American billionaire, investor, and head fund manager, served as co-chief investment officer of the world's largest head fund, Bridgewater Associates, since 1985. Many investors and market participants look up to Ray Dalio and definitely listen to what he's got to say, and a lot of them were largely influenced on his principles. Now, Ray Dalio has been warning for a while now that the US is heading for a catastrophic financial crisis, but now he's sounding the alarm more than ever, and he's saying the crisis is getting closer and closer. He recently came out with a new book, Principles for Dealing with a Changing World Order and Why Nations Succeed and Fail. He just had a recent interview where he gives three signs for us all to look out for. And you know how the saying goes, hard times make strong men. Strong men make good times. Good times make weak men and weak men make hard times. This is a constant cycle throughout history and something that is happening today. So everyone, let's not waste any time. You need to hear what Ray Dalio has got to say. Ray Dalio, founder of Bridgewater Associates and author of a new book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, Why Nations Succeed and Fail. Ray, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Did you catch that everyone? The interviewer said, Ray Dalio, nice to see you. And he says, Nice to see you. I just thought that was pretty funny, and he's probably not a fan of this interviewer. Well, let me let me clarify. Um, the three things uh, that you mentioned are um, financial conditions, um, the production of debt and money uh, to monetize those, uh, the internal conflict over wealth and other things, politics, the greater extremism, and then the rise of a great power to challenge an existing great power in the form of China. Those three things never happened in my lifetime before. Um, but they uh, happened throughout history. And when I learned that, to be surprised, I knew that I needed to study prior periods. The reason we anticipated the 2008 financial crisis was because we uh, studied the Great Depression. So the three signs he's learned from history that lead to the fall of an empire and what will ultimately lead to the collapse of America, the financial markets, and the economy is one, the monetization of the debt and printing too much currency until the currency collapses. Second, internal conflict. A nation can't really prosper if it's always fighting with itself and pulling each other down. And third is a rising power. So we're gonna dig a bit deeper into three of these topics to see if this is happening today and how bad it's really getting. Uh, buying power, uh, which comes in the form of money and credit. When that's produced in a quantity, which is much greater than the incremental production of goods, services, and financial assets, drives those financial asset prices to go up. And the printing of money, the monetization of debt, is a last phase in a long-term debt cycle because it indicates that when there's a lot of debt and there's um, a zero interest rate and you print that money, that debt monetization has its effects. So what we're seeing now in the market is very, very, very classic. It's happened repeatedly in that that enormous amount of buying power created by the creation of money, which doesn't raise living standards, that is passing through the system. And so you're seeing it happen in the inflation of goods, services, and financial assets. So again, the first sign of an empire falling down or a currency collapsing is monetizing the debt. This is simply when the government issues debt and instead of investors buying it, they may sell it directly to the Federal Reserve or they could just get a loan directly from the Federal Reserve because of course the Federal Reserve has no reserves. They can just create money out of nowhere with a few keystrokes. They've admitted this. It's no longer a conspiracy theory, everyone. So for that sign, we can tick that, that that is what the US is heading very, very close to. Like he says, they're printing money like crazy. And this is classic what all other empires have done, just like Rome before they collapsed, they completely diluted their currency or diluted their silver coins. And if you think the money printing is crazy now, just wait till you see what they do during the next financial crisis. Now he's asked, okay, well, that's what the Federal Reserve's doing. Should they stop printing money and should they start lifting interest rates much higher and much sooner? Uh, there's a trade-off that I think everybody has to understand. And that bring, that's related to the second. With the large wealth gaps and, and large not enough money in lots of places, 
the Federal Reserve and the Treasury were put into a position of needing to get checks out. And there's also this left-right conflict issue having to do with the wealth gap. And that means that you have fiscal policies that are now requiring lots of spending. And so the question is really, um, are the consequences of not doing that better or worse than the consequences of doing that? Now, when we look from an investor's point of view or an individual's point of view, we have to remember that you can't raise living standards by just creating money and credit, particularly if you don't raise productivity more than that. And that means that those asset prices are going up. So we're in the phase of the cycle, very classic, that the financial asset prices have gone up because you've given them more money, that demand is going up, and now we're having inflation, inflation of those assets. So if a lot of that buying power is going to be pulled back, particularly as we go into the next year. But there's still going to be a lot, and there's still going to be a high level of inflation of, of those types of assets. So the trade-off is always the question. Okay, so quickly, where do you come out on that trade-off? Is it a binary yes or no? The only care thing I care about is whether we're productive, whether we increase the size of the pie through productivity, and then divide it well so that you create the something closer to equal opportunity that produces greater political stability and also draws on the population going wide. And the reason I say that is because I've studied these empires, these dynasties, going back um, since the last 500 years. And you see the same thing happening over and over again. When there's a financial problem, when the granaries are empty and the coffers are empty, they print money. And when they print money and the coffers are empty, it devalues money. And with that, when you have a large gap of people at each other's throats, then you create a, a risk of an internal conflict. And that is what I think is, um, is we're at risk of. So there he's telling us what the Federal Reserve is doing is creating massive inequality. And this is what I've been talking about on the channel. They continually to say, look, we've got to keep printing this money. We've got to keep interest rates low so people can have a job. Well, we can see even if people do have a job, wages aren't keeping up with inflation. And really what this is making is wage slaves. People are having to work more and more and earning less and less. And now the top 1% in America they hold more wealth than not just the poor, not just the bottom 50%, but also more wealth than the whole middle class as well. And really, we're starting to see even inequality in the 1%, where you got the 1%, but then you got the 0.01%. And so this is making the internal conflict even worse. So we can check that off our list of what's happening today compared to other empires collapse as well. Now his question on the issue that we're having right now, this crazy inflation, and if he's worried about it. Um, I'm significantly concerned about it uh, because the amount of money and credit that has to be produced right. and is budgeted um, is a large increase. And yet, if it's not spent, it produces its own problems. The markets have a sensitivity to that. And then there's a supply demand picture for bonds. And the way it looks is if you should get the selling of bonds, it worsens that supply demand picture because the way it works is the treasury borrows and runs a deficit, but it can't produce money. So it has to sell bonds. And when it sells bonds, um, if there are not enough buyers of those bonds, then the Federal Reserve got to come in and print money and buy those bonds. And the world right now is over uh, invested in US dollar denominated bonds, uh, pension funds on the 60-40 mix, or, and they have negative real returns. And cash has a lot of negative real returns. So if there was a selling of that and a moving to other assets, stocks, um, other assets, um, commodities, other assets, or other places, other currencies, other um, real estate and the like, that selling worsens the supply demand path picture. And then if there's not enough demand, that means that the central bank has got to come in and print more money. So yes, it's not only the, the, the inflation that's in the pipeline or projected in that supply demand balance, but it's also what it could be if there's a selling of debt instrument. So we're printing too much money? Uh, to, we're, it's going to produce inflation, if that's what you're saying. But the last and most important sign, a rising power. And what is happening today? Who is this rising power? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, everybody. China. China is continuing to grow at a rapid pace. And they're doing this with an unfair advantage. They're taking advantage of other countries. They're not held to the same standards of other countries. And I'm sure a lot of the data is manipulated as well. Many economists have forecasted that China is going to overtake the US by 2030. And also the World Economic Forum told us that the US won't have world reserve currency status and it also won't be the world superpower 
by 2030 as well. But this isn't all everyone. We've just got some new shocking data to show that the US economy and the US empire is on the decline rapidly. So the data is in everybody. US trade deficits hit a record in November. Now what this simply means is the US is not a producer for the world anymore. They are consuming much more than they are producing. And this has a big effect on the country's GDP and growth. The goods trade deficit widened last month by 17.5% to 97.8 billion from 83.2 billion in October, the Commerce Department said on Wednesday. That exceeds the previous record deficit set in September of 97 billion. But it gets worse, everyone. Good exports declined 2.1%, while imports rose 4.7%. And like I said, traders continued to be a drag on gross domestic product in the US for five straight quarters. Now again, going back to a rising power, what is happening in China, everyone? China posts record trade surplus despite the global supply chain crisis. So while the US exports were declining, this is what's happening in China, even with these supply issues. Exports rose 27.1% in dollar terms last month from a year earlier to 300 billion. That was the 13th straight month of double digit growth and exceeded economists' expectations of a 22.8% gain and imports increased 20.6%, leading a trade surplus. So remember, the US is in a deficit, but they have a trade surplus of 84 billion. Now again, just because the US has been the world superpower for all our lives, it doesn't mean it's going to continue to be the case. And like I've shown, I'll bring up a chart here. We can see throughout history, Normally, empires last between 80 and 110 years. But let me simplify what Ray Dalio said and what this means for you and me. He warned about what happens when empires print money too much, which is happening right now. People's purchasing power is being reduced. We're seeing crazy inflation. And if they continue this, this is going to lead to hyperinflation. And ultimately, people are going to flee the dollar. They're not going to have faith in it anymore. And there's going to be a new world reserve currency. His second warning, internal conflict. We're continuing to see a widening gap between the poor and the rich. But there's always a point where people say enough is enough. And this causes a big internal conflict in the country. And his third warning, a rising superpower. We're continuing to see tensions between the US and China, and even where I'm in Australia rise. We're seeing tensions with Taiwan and the trade and economic war between the two world's largest superpowers is only going to get more intense over the next decade. So everyone, those are the warnings Ray Dalio has for the US. Do you agree with them? What do you think? Let me know. Now for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.